So this is part two of You Are Living in Tolerance. So if you haven't seen part one, go check that out first and then come back to this video and watch this. Now, the reason why I'm doing a part two is because obviously I only get 10 minutes to respond and I forgot one of the key points that I should have made in that video because I don't work off no fucking script. I don't rate any YouTubers who I see them and it looks like they're reading off of a screen. Blood, this shit should be in your blood, yeah? What you're talking about, this should be real life experience. So therefore, there's no fucking script. You're talking straight off the dome because it really happened in real life. You've really experienced this shit. So I have no script. I only have key points that I try to remember whilst I'm speaking and that. So anyway, what made me realize like, and obviously no, I knew people were living in tolerance already, but something that uh, happened the other day, I was just thinking myself, yeah, people really are living in tolerance and that. So I was on a job, you know sort of, what sort of work I do. So I phoned up this uh, tenant and she said, yeah, um, I'm waiting for you, come when you want, whatever, and boom. Gone to this old lady's house, she lives in a bungalow, yeah? And um, when I've gone through the door, I've seen the son, son's a big man, 45 years old. This woman is like 75, 80 years old. So anyway, boom, I'm in the, the living room and um, the mum and the son are sitting in the living room. I'm testing one of the sockets and someone opens up the front door. And for some reason, I don't know, my spidey sense went off. Like, I was thinking, who the fuck's that at the door? I don't know why I thought that. Like, I don't know these people. I don't know who comes in and out and that. Why would I be questioning or thinking, who the fuck's that at the door? The way someone opened up the door. So anyway, boom. So some, some woman, she opened up the door. I can't see her. She can't see me. But she was like, oh, speaking to the old lady. Oh, um, is everything all right? And the woman was like, yeah, what's up? Remember, this woman didn't knock the door. She just opened up the front door. She's like, yeah, what's up? She said, oh, I saw a stranger come to the house earlier. So I just wanted to check that everything's all right. I'm thinking, doesn't this woman know that the sun's here? But cool. So anyway, while she's talking to the, the woman at the door is talking to this old woman. And at some point, like, all of us knew this woman was just talking shit, yeah, being nosy. She's holding the door, and no one said anything. It's like an awkward silence. So she's holding the door for about three to five seconds. And she's like, oh, okay, then, well, if you're all right, then I'll see you around, in it? And she shut the door. Anyway, the, the mum must have said, fuck's sake, she's always coming around here. And then the son was like, she fucking, she's pissing me off and that. And then the, the mum must have said, yeah, man, I'm sick and tired of her coming through the door, opening up the door, coming to the door unannounced and that. And I was thinking, blood, why the fuck are you not, not saying anything? See, that wouldn't happen to me. Anyone that knows me, you're not just coming through my front door, turning up unannounced. Who the fuck do you think you are, blood? Now, obviously, I know certain older people in that. They used to have one of their family members come through the door unannounced. Even if on Thursday evening... You know, there was a conversation that was being had between two people. Oh, you're going to come over on Saturday, yeah? Okay, yeah, I'll see you at one o'clock and that. I don't give a fuck. I don't care if I told you I'll see you at one o'clock. When you turn up on my front door, you knock. Don't just open the door and walk the fuck in. I've seen it a few times. I've seen it with this person's constantly walking in the house without knocking or, you know what I'm saying, in the air, making their presence known and that, walking in the house. And the occupants of the house, they're not addressing the situation properly. They're making jokes. What? You don't know how to knock on that. They're making jokes about it. They're making jokes with, to the point where the man of the house is saying, yo, imagine you came through the door and you did a knock and me and her are doing something we're not supposed to on the living room floor. Yeah? Do the maths, okay? And then they're just laughing it off. Blood, I'm not making no jokes. I'm not laughing nothing fucking off, blood. Do not come through this fucking door again unannounced or there's going to be problems, yeah? But the thing is, the way I am, I don't get into... I don't have problems with people like that. No one is just coming through my door unannounced. Now, if the person was at my house and they left to go to the shop or went away for 10 minutes to make a phone call in the car, you don't need to knock every time you come in. But what I'm saying is, if you're just randomly turning up, I ain't spoke to you that day, you're just coming through the door, no, we're gonna have a fucking problem. We're gonna have a problem. My girl speaks Polish, yeah? We went to go and meet the mechanic that she introduced me to initially months and months ago. We went to go and meet him because I needed to drop my car to him and obviously I need a way back home. She came with me, she followed me to go and meet this guy. We've all jumped out of our cars and that, you know, the mechanics in his van, I've jumped out of my car, she's jumped out of her car and they start speaking to each other in Polish. I'm like, yo, 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 stop that.
start speaking in your language when you're around me. Yeah, I'm not some fool that you're going to be having a conversation. No man is having a conversation with, with my woman in front of me, and I can't understand what's what's being said. It's not. I'm, it's not even no jealousy things. Not no paranoia. My mechanic has my girlfriend's number, so if they wanted to hook up on sly or behind my back, whatever, they could do that. It's not the point. My missus is not having a conversation with a man in front of me and I don't know what the fuck they're saying. Am I a fool? You see, certainly you, man, yeah? You, man, could be German speakers, yeah? And a man will be speaking another language in front of you and you won't say nothing. Nah, 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 I'm not a fool. I'm not a fool. No man is having no conversation with my missus in front of me and I'm just going to sit there and, and, and just with my hands in my pocket trying to work out what the fuck they're saying. Even my girl's sister came to my yard. They're speaking their language in the kitchen. I went in there like, yo, when you lie here, when you're here, don't speak your language in my, in my house whilst I'm here. Shut that down, put it into it right then and there. Certain man will be thinking, oh, how do I address the situation? But I'm not thinking about nothing. Yeah, man, fire from the hip. So a lot of you people right now living in Torrance, like I said in the previous video, you lot got neighbors that bun weed, play loud music, are disrespectful. You don't say nothing. You lot will turn up to a new estate, new property, new house and that. And just want to fit in and get along with people and not ruffle no feathers. You lot will allow your neighbours to tell you what to do. Like I said in the previous video, my neighbours, I haven't even moved in yet. It's, I've had like four altercations with people on that cul-de-sac and I haven't even moved in yet. You can't tell me where to park my car. Because we've got a lot of idiots on planet Earth who are obsessive about parking spaces. Do not tell me where to park my fucking car. We're going to have a fucking problem with you, boy. It's as simple as that. So... I don't live in tolerance. That's why I get into situations and altercations with a lot of people because I'm not putting up with no crap. Um, but yeah, like I said in the previous video, I had some little kids playing football at the back of my house where I'm living right now. They no longer play football at the back of my house because I sorted it out. Even my direct neighbor, she don't like me because obviously I had to tell her off one time throwing weeds into my garden because the weeds in from my garden are going into her garden so she was throwing the weeds back over i don't do that i've had to go knocking at her door because the dog's barking too much and that whatever but you know what although she don't like me and that i'm actually a good neighbor because i don't play no loud music i don't smoke weed i'm a young black man who does not bring around any antisocial people or nothing like that there's no noise my neighbors would never know i was in my house unless my car's outside the front i don't make no noise but if we're going to have a problem, then it's going to be a, a real situation. I had some old man that moved into the house next door. Obviously, there's a long parking bay at the front of my house, but there's no allocated bays. There's no numbers. There's no markets, nothing. You can park where you want. I must have parked in the spot that he usually parks in. I remember I was in one of the bedrooms at the front of my house. Well, there's only one bedroom at the front of my house. And um, I just saw a car pulling up in the distance. I don't even know why I was looking at the window. A car was approaching in the distance. It's quite a, a, a busy, a fast road, the road I live on. A car was approaching in the distance and it stopped outside my house and it beeped, beep. I was like, why the fuck? Why is this person just randomly beeping? Then I was like, what the fuck? Hold on a minute. Ain't that that old man's car? Like, ain't that the old man in his car? This guy's jumped out of his car, come come running to my, uh, my, my, my front door. I blasted him. He never, he never come back since. Don't fucking come knocking my door. Because you're angry that I parked in the space that you usually park in. Taking a fucking piss, bro. So, yeah, I, 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 I don't live in no fucking tolerance and that. A lot of men right now are putting up with shit because they're scared of a confrontation. I had some African people living next to my mum's house. The woman tried to get mouthy to my mum. I went to the ne next door and you get me. I, just, I, pushed the, I pushed the guy where he had to call police and that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not having no one talk shit to my mum. There's one guy on my estate, he is fucking lucky he's an old man, yeah? Because he said something to my mum when he was standing out at the balcony that was disrespectful. And he's lucky I don't go and crash him. Yeah, he's lucky he's an old fucking man, yeah? So, um, yeah, I'm not having nothing. A lot of people, they want to look for excuses and that. There's certain man right now, if their mum was disrespected by the neighbour, they'll think, well, it only happened, it happened a week ago, so what's done is done. Ain't nothing fucking done, Rude Boy. Ain't nothing done, bro. A lot of men will use any excuse not to get into a fist, a physical altercation. Because men are not about this. It's not about being a gangster. It's about being a Ross Clark man.